Well, happy Saturday, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here. We're live from One Bethlehem Plaza here in downtown Bethlehem on the 27th of July. Hard to believe July is almost in the history books. Uh, got a nice blue sky day here. Thought we'd talk election. It's about 101 days away. Look at election weather here over the last uh, nine election cycles, presidential election cycles, going back to 1992. And uh, interesting trends here just to see what happened on those days. Uh, again, obviously today we can vote uh, by mail in ballot, uh, advance, uh, the day of. So again, just looking at some of the correlation trends here, we find that obviously uh, if it's colder, um, tends to be less turnout, uh, 60 64% correlation over the last uh, nine cycles. Uh, less snow is obviously a plus, 36% correlation to less. And rainfall, again, typically has been a factor, but uh, again, only showing about a 5% correlation that drier is better. So we obviously, the obvious of warmer, drier is better. Uh, if you look at that really hot one back in uh, 2016. Uh, again, so we're looking at a pattern maybe more similar to uh, 2020, uh, but a little, we have the trends generally coolest since uh, coolest snow is since 2000 uh, for the week of the election and the uh, wettest since 2012. So again, just some interesting facts here on the past presidential cycles here. One cycle here we're in is obviously the hurricane season. Begins to ramp up uh, in really late August into October. But uh, again, so folks are saying, where's the hurricane season? Again, we're, we're not typically expecting a lot uh, at this point in the season. But uh, again, conditions do look to become more favorable here in the next couple of weeks. So a lot, about 90% of the season is still statistically ahead of us here in uh, mid-August through mid-October. So, And the Hurricane Center actually is already monitoring a system that could go through the Caribbean here, a low chance of development here. But again, something to watch. The waters are still very warm, even though they're, see the storm track here again. So it doesn't, models don't currently show anything major, but it's heading through the Caribbean toward Florida. Uh, again, if it does develop, uh, right now the Bermuda High is just pressing the kind of the intertropical convergence zone a little further south, and so you just can't get spin up when the activity's that far south, but that could change here the next couple weeks as, uh, again, the Bermuda tends to weaken, the dust off of Africa tends to diminish, uh, so things should get uh, a little more favorable here. Again, the water temperatures actually are cooler than last year, but they're still well above average, again, across the main development regions with the uh, 80s and as you get toward the obviously the u.s here they're uh, in the near 90 um, so again something could always flare up really close to the coast here which doesn't give you a lot of notice as well so those are the concerning storms that would develop in texas or south florida looking at the tropical activity or, i'm sorry severe weather activity here took a little bit of a break here only uh, 23 tornadoes 231 hail events 300 wind events so a little bit of a uh, lull here this past week uh, again but tornadoes are still the peak category as expected uh, trending the most in 13 years now while hail is actually 19 percent less than last year and below average um, wind is uh, basically the same as last year and about uh, nine percent above average Looking at last week across the, the U.S. and the world here, again, uh, had a cool week uh, here in the U.S. It was two degrees cooler than last year, cools in five years, 18th warmest, so about average on a national scale, but a tale of two halves. Again, it was warm west and cool from Texas into the east. Uh, rainfall up 52% versus last year. What is in four years? Ninth, what is in 39 years? Real hot and wet spot was there in China. Uh, they had the influence of a typhoon that hit the Philippines and Taiwan and then ultimately into mainland China, so that's why they were very wet, number one wettest. Um, world overall was uh, warmer versus last year, and it continues this wet trend, wettest in four years, um, fourth wettest in 39 years. Now, since it left are the trends versus average. If we look at this week here, again, getting into the first few days of August, a little bit of a warming trend here. Again, uh, cooling in the west, uh, they'll take it, and uh, the heat moves into the heartland here, particularly Kansas. U.S. overall, 1.9 warmer than last year, warmest in 13 years, third warmest in 39 years. So a warm week for the U.S. overall. Looking at precip here, we're 22% wetter than last year. What is in four, ninth, what is in 39 years? Heaviest conveyor belt of rain is really going to be from uh, Minnesota, North Dakota, down into Florida. So again, the heart of the corn belt uh, will get some much needed rain uh, with uh, moderate temperatures. The real, again, real hot heat uh, will be out there in Kansas. Looking at next week here, again, getting into the first week of August, uh, hot. Again, hot expands to the west and the Rockies and the central plains uh, a bit, uh, diminishing a bit here in the Great Lakes. Um, but again, so heat, heat's shifting really to the west. U.S. overall is still pretty hot, 3.1 warmer than last year, warmest in 23 years, second warmest in 39. We'll see about this dry pattern here. Models tend to struggle with two things, finding the cool weather and finding uh, the wet weather. Uh, but 32% uh, drier in last year, driest in 14, 14 driest in 39 years. Not entirely buying into that. Uh, we'll see how much of that tropical moisture um, heads up into the southeast. Again, good news, uh, more heavy rain for the drought stricken southeast. So they'll, they'll take it for sure. And if we look at these uh, world two-week aggregate trends here again, so cool spots would be there in uh, 
Australia, uh, Northeast Siberia, Alaska. Interesting, uh, Australia's had a pretty cool, uh, cool listen, over a decade here, winter, fall and winter, and um, their flu season's actually up 14%. So they've had a pretty severe flu season, which is typical of a colder start to fall and uh, colder core winter. So again, type A is their season, and so that's something for us to look for here in the U.S. Type A was our season last year. We had a pretty strong late season. It took a while. Uh, for it to peak um, in January, but uh, again, kind of a bellwether of our season ahead. Thought we'd end here again, just world, world precip outlook of uh, through 28 July through 10 August. Again, heaviest rain is obviously going to be in the eastern half of the country, Mississippi River kind of east, and uh, wet spots. You see again the conveyor belt of moisture in the intertropical convergence zone across to sub-Saharan Africa. Again, those as that shifts more toward the Cape Verde season here in uh, mid-August, we'll get a better chance for development. But right now, that activity has just been too far suppressed to the south. Uh, you know, again, 5, 10 degrees latitude. It just can't get enough spin with any activity. As that shifts more to the 10, 15, 20 degrees latitude, then we can start to get some hurricane development here. So something to watch here in the next couple weeks. So that, folks, we hope you have a great week ahead, and we will be back here again this time next week. Mm-hmm.